mode. All right. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Parents Voice, where we discuss what we are to do legally as a class action to make those changes and represent ourselves. That's right. We're not looking for an attorney to represent us because we know about negligence. Do we not, Lori? <laughs> so Girl, if, that, if that ain't the truth, I don't know what is. Yep, yep, yep. So you were just telling me about a couple things that you picked up on negligence. So here at, at Save Our Children Truth Commission, we learn the law. We go into court with a clear head. We talk about the issues. We get down to the elements and we kind of just, we solve the problem. We don't just kind of keep it going, right? We wanted to mitigate circumstances as, yes, she, as she just mentioned. So could you tell us a little bit about what you learned about torts, being that we're involved in a negligence law, lawsuit, Miss Lori, and you are the family reunification consultant or counselor for Save Our Children. Could you please tell us a little bit more about what you've been discovering as far as what negligence is and what the court has to address in those issues. Okay, so we need to watch our timelines, okay. damages, um, the actual cause, like, and what, where, like, the duty. Yes. The date, like, physical harm needed if it was not. And yes. you want to just stick to basically what they're asking about yes. and not anything beyond that like are right. is there damages if there's no damages then there's nothing to discuss and and you're right sometimes they want to get you into these long elaborate conversations but at the end of the day we don't want to get caught up in those type of things nope. because they can be mentally draining so either the person has proved their case or they're not and we want to approach it from a very dry to the point legal standpoint you know and get justice from a court and have them respect us and take us seriously. So like another thing I learned about was like, um, like um, mental health, like, so you know how they use your mental health as everything with the department. Exactly. Um, they, they can't just come after you and they can't accuse you of your mental health without having. It be an actual cause of something. Yes. Exactly. And, and damages to substantiate that the mental health was some type of cause you to breach your duty. If yeah. they can't prove that the mental health problem caused you to breach your duty, saying that you have or don't have a mental health issue is really a moot point at that <laughs> because it doesn't fit the tort's definition of what negligence you're, you're right. And there's only so many elements of a tort. Exactly. And <laughs> girl, I, this is what I've been doing for. And 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 a thing is too is it's like you gotta be direct in like intervening your your act and like yeah. what they did. And, and they did intervening acts. Absolutely, you you can't believe you approached it that way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they stepped in and they actually caused a lot of these things themselves, and they were the intervening act in the causal chain of connections. And, wow, and, that's good. And another thing I learned, okay, so they, which we already all know this, but like, so they need like substantial factors of their supposedly made up causes to the judges to get yeah. a removal order. Yes. Um, but it's, they don't have it to back it up. So that's why they keep us in court and they want you to play through their damn hoops. And no, we're yeah. not about that here at St. No. Martin. Not at all. And, and they're the, and and they're the <laughs> they're... land occupiers right now. That's yeah. how I see it. Okay, so how'd you? Where did you get this from? I mean, I'm so interested in how you came up with that. Okay, well, okay, they're, they they took what mm -hmm. trespassed. Right? Mm -hmm. They trespassed on our ter on our premises. Yes, and, in our state, and they. They're not a leasee. They're not a, a leaseor. They're not. They're just the the state. They're a funded state agency. They're not even a government. Yes. And they come in and take. They trespass on our land. Yes. Well, now we need to trespass on theirs and take our kids back. Yes. Does That's that right. make sense? It does. And, but we got to be professional about it at, at the same time. Exactly. Classy, you know, make sure your hair is done. Make sure I'm 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 the go-to person for these torts. Um, <laughs> but you got it. You got it. Appearances, and you got to 
And if you are responsible for something of your, the removal of your children, mm -hmm. own up to it. Don't yes, and acknowledge it and fix mistakes. it. Exactly. And we will fix it. But you know, it, you know, they're the ones that they want to get us for assault, like say assault and battery, but they're the ones that are assaulting us by removing it, our yes. children. Exactly. And so, it's so interesting how the, 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 the cycle of abuse works because so many times the abusers are the main ones who want to accuse someone of abuse and that's their method of covering up what they do. Right. Instead of like, here's my thing is, okay, I'm a domestic abuse survivor. They, they removed my two kids off of hearsay. So they overstepped so many jurisdictions, so many boundaries. And well, why is my ex-husband not in jail for what he did, but you want to take my kids from me? Oh, yeah. heck no. So you wonder, is it really about the reasons that they're saying that it is? Because, you know. My caseworker didn't like me. You know, we're going to share. I have some very, very difficult news to, to talk to you about, but it's very similar to the story that you shared about um, Cassandra. This has happened to a one-year-old baby, and Christina is the one who introduced me to this other young lady, but her baby, I, I, don't, I won't even, I can't even utter the words of what happened to her one-year-old baby, but, but we'll talk what about it. What state was it in? Florida. <clears throat> yes. So with that in mind, you guys, you know, what Lori was talking about is appearances are everything. Sometimes we're, we're going to talk about a professional make under tonight. OK, some people call it makeover. We're going to just call it a make under. Why? Because we have gone so far with our freedom of speech and our freedom of expression in this country that sometimes we don't forget how to be conservative, especially at occasions where we need to be conservative, like court appearances, television appearances, church, going to see your in-laws. There are certain times where all of your tattoos shouldn't be on display. It's, you should kind of keep your, yeah, right now is completely fine. But when we go to court, how do we transform? So we're like a blank canvas to the judge and they can't see all of our emotions right there out there in front of everyone right they're gonna automatically form an opinion or they've already they already formed their opinion not even before you meet them off of just your case they form that opinion but they have the accusations that yep. they have said about you so now when they're meeting you they want to determine something so i'm going to show you something you guys and for those who were here a little bit earlier they got a jump start on seeing this video. So I'm going to rewind it. And I want you all to be completely judgmental here. Okay. You're like, oh, we don't, I, I know usually it's like, no, no, let's not judge anybody. Let's not, but you have the right to be judgmental here because I'm asking you to be a judge, just like a judge is going to judge you. You are going to be a judge today. Like you have bang your gavel and say what you think. And it could be you have you have you have absolute immunity for whatever you say today in this courtroom because we want to hear from you and what you think first impressions and first appearances. So we're going to be super critical here, but this is where we get down again to the difference between save our children and other groups because we want you to put your best foot forward. We're going to train you in every single area. Some people are going to just tell you, give you a good sympathy story, but we're going to train you in public speaking, legal writing, uh, developing your own business and incorporating your estate so that way you can protect your assets, including your family, your lineage, your name, your, your, your land, or whatever it is that you have. And we also want to teach you about how to cook healthy food for your children. So that way you don't have to go to the doctor and be, and, and be sick. We wanna go through everything. But today we're gonna to talk about appearances. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this video here and I want you to give your two cents on why this attorney, although they helped their client in advocating them, well, I guess because they didn't wanna hurt their feelings, they didn't tell them the truth. So here we go, let me share my screen with you. And let's get to let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to blow this up, and let's get to. I'm going to just I'm going to I'm going to do different people at once, and then we're all going to give give their opinion. So let let it play for a little while. That call initially is what led to um, the 
DHS social workers coming out and removing the children. The boys were initially together. The baby girl was alone. The oldest girl was alone. alone. Okay, I'm going to stop. So before I even get into the things that she's, her attire, I'm going to talk about her language, okay? The first thing is she said, she, she has picked up on DCFS language. You start using their words. Let me tell you how they trick you. The enemy tricks you into using his report. She says he picked, they picked up the girls. At first, the boys were together, and then the girls were together, and then they separated. What is wrong with that statement? This is Save Our Children talking about presenting yourself in public speaking. As a mother, what is wrong with you making that statement? She's not using names. That's right. She's not identifying our children. Yes. And what I love about Christina is that she's always talking about her daughter. She calls her daughter by name. She's showing off pictures. She's showing that motherly affection. She doesn't say the child is with her parental. These are your children here. Yes, they call them the children in court. That's what they say because that's what they are to them. But you don't have to pick up their language and trying to sound all professional and bougie and sound like them. And now you're sounding stupid calling your own children the children. That's not what you do. So remember, continue to call your children by their name, your little angels, my sweetheart, my children. You don't have to necessarily use their name, but they're, they're always going to be my children. They're never going to be the children. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you kind of understand where I'm coming from with that one? Absolutely. <laughs> I got to remember when we go to court to use my girl's biological names, not their what their adoptive names would have been. Yes, and it can be very confusing when they do stuff like that. And remember, you all, this is all a trick for you to, you know, when you respect their authority and they play these games with you, this is all a trick to get you to incriminate yourself, even though they want to say they're helping you. So let's keep going. We're going to talk about her attire, but hold on, please. It was a wall for some time, um, and then they eventually joined. The only time they were all together was once under. Okay, what's going on right here? What is she doing? Talking with her hands, staring at her hands. Oh, they were a wall at one point in time. Rolling her, rolling her eyes. Okay, so hey, let's go back again. I'm going to play it in slow motion. Yeah. Two and a half, maybe three weeks, and. Um, he had bought me a van, the van broke down, whatever. Okay. So what is she else? I'm, I'm going to be super critical here. Okay. She says he bought you a van, the van broke down. What does that have to do with the story, right? She's not sticking to what the facts are. Facts are you're going off to something else. You're talking crap about your life. The van broke down. Oh, my life is so bad. So they're looking at you. So you're, if you tell a judge that your van broke down, even though it's not your fault, what do they hear from that about that circumstance? Excuses. Yes. Or that, you know, your life is just very hard. Okay, so let's get let's get into the overall look here. Okay, so. Fake nails, you guys. I'm sorry. I know that people love their nails. <laughs> and nothing, and her nails look beautiful, by the way. I'm not going to sit here and say they don't. They look absolutely beautiful. But they're just not for court. Court is about being plain and simple. This is not a time to show the judge your manicure. Right. I can, can I address something? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Her earrings, her nose are... Double nose ring. Double nose ring. What does a double nose ring say? And I want you guys to comment. Don't, don't don't sit here and um don't don't be quiet. You gotta, I mean, you you're the judge right now. You have to I think be it looks trashy. Comment. It looks super trashy. Or like yeah, you're um, look like she's respecting herself. No. I mean, it looks like she's ready for a threesome. I'm gonna be honest with you. She looks if like I, a I was gonna say a ghetto fied whore. That's what I was gonna say. Exactly. I, I, I'm sorry that it's hurting people's feelings, but I got to hurt your feelings so that you can go in and be successful. I can't spare your feelings. And oh, I don't want to say something. That's that's really that's me. That's racist. That's sexist. That's that's a different religion. No. You sh a judge shouldn't know anything about your religion, your ethnicity, what positions you like, <laughs> anything like and, that. And the hole in her blouse is as trashy as 
Yes. Yeah. Why do you have, a, why are you wearing this? This right here is too many colors. Awesome. Keep it simple, you guys. Very basic patterns, white, gray, brown, plaid, no designer clothing. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next person here. Okay. Hold on here. Parent is faking the child's symptoms to get attention or sometimes to get money. Okay, so what is she doing wrong by telling this story? Talking about money. And somebody besides Lori, give me some comments here. I want to hear from everyone. What is she? What I mean, and I'm and I'm picking on an old lady here, so I'm not being politically correct. Everybody's gonna get some of this tonight. Okay. So what is she doing wrong by telling that story? Let's keep going. They took her from me. First of all, I fought, you know, with every ounce of my of my being, um, their removal from my house. It was highly traumatic. They literally snatched her. She was in the hospital two days before Christmas. And they um, asked me to leave the room, on, you know, to go down to the registration desk. It was a put up kind of thing. And then they had social workers and police come in and bar me from the room. Okay, it's not it's not it's just not too bad, but it could be better. What what how could she improve? She's not too bad. I would I would I would address the whoever removed your children, like the Department of Child, like yes. Who are they, they for you guys? Let's not give them anonymity. Do they deserve to be anonymous? No. So no. if you're going to sit down and get on t television with a bunch of books behind you to be really smart and tell everyone what happened to you, who is who? These people have names. When you tell your story to me or anyone else, name the parties. When like you me, say, for example, example. You have no idea who they're talking about. They. I would say in my own, and I feel like I'm the only one talking in the group right now, but um, <laughs> like the child of uh, child of. Uh, Child Protective Services of Texas, Jennifer Luera, adoption worker of out of Bell County, Texas. Yes, that helps. Now, do you see from a storytelling element, people are starting to fill in the blanks and know what's going on. It's not so general. Mm -hmm. These are just tips, tips and tricks. Like really, they're invaluable and they're priceless to helping you persuade people to understand your story and to sympathize with you as opposed to wonder is she lying or is she really you know are they right you want it to take your time to now tell your version of the story no, let's not tell their version of the story well they said that he had that i had met mal children they said that they kicked me out of the, the hospital room and they did this and that you're telling their version of events what happened from your side of the story i was there by my son's side when uh, Suez Louisa from uh, the Department of Child and Family Services came and removed me from being beside my baby at the hospital where he needed me most. I don't know, I have no idea why she would do something so horrible between a mother. Remember, you're getting them on your side. Don't start using their terminology. And this is very traumatizing. What does that mean? Right. That's that's kind of like a, a very sterile word to me. To me, Mel, you know how I nitpick everybody and I, I'm a people reader. To me, if I was watching this outside of this, I mm -hmm. would say that she's a she's a narc for the department. Like she is the department trying she, to, exactly, uh, to to exact. She seems like she's just fits the prototypical personality type. And now she's just trying to say, you know, pretend like she's a victim as well. And she's really kind of it's very suspect. So let me show you guys another person and I want someone else to comment, but I really appreciate the, my uni reunification counselor for all her comments, because this is what you get when you call Lori Beth, you get great advice, you get good legal analysis, you get great paralegal help, and you're not just getting someone there to shoot the breeze with you and to cut to color you, tell you uh, the world is um, a, a bad place and you're a complete victim and and let's have a pity party together. No, let's let's actually get down to Brax tax and fix this mode. No more victimhood, right? So I'm going to criticize another group here. Let's go. Let's let me play this this one, and I want you all to pick them apart for what they're doing right and wrong because we don't spare anybody's feelings around here. They're telling me I'm not doing what I need to do to get my kids. Uh, they're telling me I'm not a good father. You know, they're telling me all kinds of negative stuff, and then telling me I need to be positive. 
it, it's extremely frustrating. Uh, and to add to that, now we're not good parents. Now we're this. Now we have to take parenting classes. When we won okay. the first trial, we, we never parents. had to take Sorry. parenting classes. That was one thing um, they said that we were great at, um, making sure that our kids were fed, clothed, clean, everything. Okay. How does that sound, really? Let's let's tell the truth here. She made sure her kid her her kids were fed, clothed, and clean. To me, it sounds like her kids are not a priority. They're they're yeah, uh, they're just fed, clothed, and clean. Like you know, you got to do the dishes at night. Okay, like come on, you guys. This doesn't present well. This is not. I would never. When people send me videos like this and they show me that, oh, they're 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 bringing awareness to the issue. Let me tell you who put this this video out. People who want to stop what Save Our Children is doing. They want to drag parents who look pathetic and ridiculous out here and say, these are the kind of people who get their children taken. These type of irresponsible uh, individuals with the nose ring and some lady, and, and these are the one, victims. But we know that that's not true. They want these people to represent you. This is so sad. All right, let's keep going. And I would and I want to hear some more responses here. So let's keep going. We're good parents. They appeared on my doorstep one morning out of a clear blue sky. Hold on. And she said no. So uh they told her that they would terminate her rights as well. We have lots of questions and they've not been answered. They're still not getting I think answered. she's scratching her leg or something like that. Uh, when, when we push to get our questions answered, uh the first thing I'm okay. The aggressor, and the th uh, the second thing is that uh, they remind us that they're pushing for termination. Okay, how do they look to you? Let's, how do they really look? Come on, you you're you're the judge here, and don't 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 be politically correct. Okay, just tell the truth. Do they look like they are responsible individuals? No. No. What do they kind of look like? Let's let's be honest here. Let's tell the truth. Um, they look like actors. They look like actors. Oh, God. Like you are good. What trying to say. At Malachi, why do you think they would put these actors out here to say that these are people who are trying to get their children back? Pretty much, like you said earlier, dissolve what we're trying to do right now. It's a movement right now. You yes. said this, and I said this, and I reconfirmed what you said in the month of September. We, we're in the right place right now, thanks thanks to God, man. We're in the right place right now. And so many of these um, lawsuits is going off. It's to the point right now, they're trying to get everything to dissolve. Like, shh, please just go away, go away. No, we're not going away. Exactly. So they put these people out here to try and say that these are the people that they take their children from because they would never come and interview any of these, any, any of us. They put them out here and they look like they're just kind of scrubby, right? If they're doing a proper documentary, and let's let me be honest here, I have I do production as well. Why not present your clients in the best possible light? Why put them out there in a black hoodie, and he they look like they're just swirling and they do they are they married? Who knows? You know they left that question open. You know why not talk about the positives with your clients and make them look good? Why? Just say, well, what did they do to you? Well, we were just, they didn't make us take a test at first, but then they did. And then I made sure my kids were fed and that they ate and that they were clean. And she's scratching herself and he's sitting there looking up. Come on. They make them look suspect as if they were on drugs or something. Exactly. This is, so when you all see we are getting our website hacked, that sometimes the emails aren't going through, that we're doing everything that we can to get through to you, they're working overtime to make sure their narrative gets out there and to keep our voice suppressed. So when you do have an opportunity to get your voice out there, you have to come and looking professional, come and looking um, like you know what you're talking about and you have to talk about the law and don't let them get you into these rants about nothing. Which is, which is what these rants are about, long rants about nothing, but I digress. I'm happy that they even tried to have a documentary on this whole thing. I'm glad that this being talked about, but still, we understand that this is still propaganda here. Hello, hello Mel. I'm, I'm on. This is Joy. 
Hi, Joy. Oh my goodness, so glad to have you. Um, I'm, I'm, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be on. Uh, and Christina got me on. <laughs> Thank you, Christina, because I was I meant to call time. you and give you uh, um, a heads really up, but me because one person, two kids. Okay, let me pause this. I'm so see him, the more I adapted to being able to. Okay, so I'm going to pause this, and I want you, Joy, to share your story just really briefly uh, with the group. So that way they can help understand exactly how bad it is out here. And I, I would never share your story before you share it because it was such a important story. So that's the reason why I waited. You know, I didn't want to get ahead of you and talking about, talking about important okay. subjects. Could you please tell us about your family and how you were traumatized and victimized? And, you know, you can please be concise as possible, but at the same time, you don't want to, you know, you don't have to skip over anything because we understand. So please right. tell us a little bit about your story and, and, and name names, name actors. Don't hide anybody's confidentiality here because we want to name and shame these people. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can with the story. Um, so my, my one-year-old, he's a twin and he uh, passed away on April 30th. Um, however, when he was, you know, I had to call for help. He was rushed to the hospital and he had shortness of breath. And so um, when so, my husband and I, oh, uh, I'm sorry, what, what, what is his name? And oh, my son is Azriel Lisby. Okay. That's my son. Okay. And so he was rushed to the hospital. Did you have to take him to the hospital because he wasn't breathing or something like that? Right. Yeah. yeah he had low breathing. So, um, you know, I called the paramedics. And, um, you know, they, they got him to the hospital. And so as we got there, my husband and I, um, they said that they worked on him for 55 minutes. And then when they were done, uh, they had announced him deceased. And so uh, 12 minutes later, his body started to get warm. His temperature started going back. Everybody, everything started stabilizing and he came back on his own. So they said, okay, he's in stable condition now. And so they moved him upstairs to the, uh, on the children's floor, I believe. And that's when he was sedated. And I kept asking certain questions because I was very concerned and I was in shock to see him come back alive on his own and then to see him in a different condition uh, when, when I get to the second floor. And so as I'm asking questions, the doctor, she says, okay, you only have a few minutes with your son. You're gonna to have to leave. And I said, well, why do I have to leave? She said, oh, um, because of your tone. I said, have I been disrespectful? She said, no. And then I know maybe five minutes later, the hospital security came up to the floor, second floor. And, um, and there was also an officer and they escorted me downstairs. And as I'm going downstairs, my husband is downstairs. He's in line to, to go upstairs to meet me. But however, they removed him out of the line and they shut down the whole second floor, which to this day, I still don't understand why they shut down the whole second floor. So um, that night on April 29th, that night around three o'clock a.m., I had the city, the city police officers, I had task force, uh, the SWAT team, at my door and a DCF investigator at my door banging and banging and they opened the door with their guns and their weapons out telling us to get out, get out. She came in and removed our children. And, um, but prior to that, we were, she asked us a question, was it a good time to, for her to come over and do a home visit? And we told her no, not at this time, uh, cause it's not a good time with our son being in the hospital. And so, um, that that just completely went out the door when she was when they came here around three o'clock in the morning banging and banging three o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning now prior to that oh, time, wow that's the devil's hour too a weekend hour wow oh, oh on the weekend on the weekend how, does, how horrible i'm so sorry that that you had to experience that that must have been devastating to hear someone banging on the door in the middle of the night like that yeah very scary come out come out <sighs> Really? And they treat you like you are like a, some criminals. For, and for right. what reason? She said that there was pre present danger in a, in a home. 
Oh so my she, goodness. And what was her name? I've got to get her name. Uh believe it's Alexandria. Uh, but I forget her her last name is um very I've never seen a last name like that. So I have to they always uh, have weird names, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's their real name a lot of times because you know these government agents they go by not their real name many times they make up names yes even the name you think you have for that person is not their real name and they've gone through several name changes even if it's in the uh uh court papers the court order yes that's still not their real name that is a, a an agent name many times not all the time but a lot of right. times if it's not exotic and, enough yes and another thing i find is, uh, interesting is that he he died they said he passed away at 8 15 the next day on april 30th but april is the uh is the organ donor organ donor month and that was the last day april 30th and i find out that was it was a coincidence and, and did they harvest your son's organs i don't know where they are they, so you I know said that, I, that his organs were missing. His, all his organs were missing, the insides and his eyes and brain. So he took everything. Without this mother's consent, they are harvesting children for organs. And I would never, ever say something like this because I don't even have it in me to speak on the issue. However, I could not contain this issue when this mother came forward to me with what happened to her infant baby son with a twin and this twin boy has to grow up without his twin now yeah because of the killing and so we talked about we discussed unlawful um wrongful death and we also discussed medical malpractice lawsuits that you have against the hospital that must be filed because when we don't file them it's basically we're not making a claim. So it's like they get away with it. Right. So we have to put, hold them accountable for these things, you guys. So why do we work so hard with Save Our Children is because they're working overtime to do what they do on, on you know, why don't we celebrate Halloween? Because we know what that means, that, that, that there are certain days or certain hours, um, months that they, that they must perform these ritual sacrifices. And I don't want to scare anyone, but it's happening, you all. It's happening. Yeah, we're and we're and I'm. You know, my husband and I were looking. It's a scary feeling. It's a fearful feeling. You know, and we're spiritual people, but we find ourselves looking behind our backs and trying to figure out what has happened with our son's organs. Not only that, his cells and body tissue being used. Yes. And this is another reason why we don't promote any type of toxins, pharmaceutical toxins, because we know they are made in their witch doctor labs where they use baby organs, not just the ones that die, but the uh, aborted fetal cells to uh, mix with beast cells, mix with all types of um, gain of function viruses. And they claim that you're, they're giving you an immune response when really they're giving you a satanic concoction of poison in order to bring you under their new world order. And in addition to that, you guys, I, 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 I'm digressing here, but I just wanna say that this is the medical community that people trust so much that's doing this. These doctors that people say, I'm taking my child to the doctor, I'm doing a good thing. You take your child to the doctor and they end up dead. Do you still believe in all the, the stuff that your doctor is telling you that he's not causing your child's autism, that he's not um, uh, targeting you and your family? Do you still believe in your doctor? Your doctor is just so loving and so kind and just wants the best for you? This is medical malpractice at this point in time. This is medical kidnapping and murder. Very, now, very scary. how many people knew? Now, when I heard about drug pushers, you always think about the, the ones they put in the media, right? The drug pushers, the, the, the person of color, the male of color in the hood who's trying to get everyone hooked on his, um, his dope. But what about the drug pushers that are in the suits, in a business suit, and call themselves... Pfizer and Moderna. Do you know that Pfizer actually has a criminal record? They're a company. Companies are actually 
fictitious people and they can get criminal records just like individuals can. They have a criminal record for fraudulent businesses practices. So I tell people, it's time to come out of the pharmaceutical industry, get back to the nature and the herbs that God has given us to heal our bodies and don't let them be so quick to put a diagnosis on you. Okay, they always want to diagnose you with something and say, oh, you have this or you have this. I heard that there's a new one called, uh, I don't know if TJ's here tonight, but TJ was, she sent me something about something called legal abuse syndrome, that a new syndrome that the, the, um, the psychiatric community has out to diagnose individuals who have been victimized by the, uh, the legal injustices. TJ, do you happen to, to, um, to know a little bit yes, more about that? Yes, it's, uh, yes, it's called um, legal abuse syndrome. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a new thing in a, whatever the it's DSM. called, Diagnostic and Statistical uh, Manual of Mental Disorders. So, and it's, uh, it's mostly for, actually this term is uh, made up for people who are uh, suffering in parental alienation with divorce and stuff because they're being dragged in the court and stuff. And, um, and they're constantly in emotional and mental turmoil. All right, so let's, let's look at the word syndrome. All right, so you're in emotional turmoil as a result of... It, it has lots of truth to it. And they're like, they're, they're fighting for their life and their rights. And that's how we feel. So it's nothing invented, but I don't like because they made it like a di diagnosis. Exactly. So, no, so they're like so looking they, at they, you like you're yes. the issue. What so, about, so the, I they, thought legal yes. abuse syndrome would be the people perpetuating the abuse. Yes, because like me, um, I don't like diagnosis. Yes, like I went through pre period of depression, but I'm not depressed anymore. It's something like, I don't wanna be diagnosed with that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But they uh, like, it's kind of like they made it on purpose getting in this manual. So everyone who is uh, in courts and who is going through parental alienation or through CPS, that we are already mentally diagnosed. And we already mentally are suffering from them, but they already wanna push diagnosis on us. You know what I mean? So they're going that further step that I don't do like. Do you see the, listen, do you see the level of demonic warfare that we're dealing with and how far they will go. They will put it in the book. They are trying to create a diagnostic for what they're doing to you. And, and, and they're gonna make it like our fault. Like I told you when it was my case, I'm just gonna say that they blame war in my country on me. Like it's my fault. Everything yeah. was my fault. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. So, you know, that's what they do. This is their game. They turn everything and it makes it your fault. That's like uh, uh, whatever, narcissist tra trait. Narcissistic right? abuse. Yeah. Yes, so they, they all, um, I mean, most of them get into that, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, I was, uh, I was also um, in hospital, uh, um, my OBGYN actually, she's the one who called CPS on me. And then oh, there was four doctors who checked my son and I was present and they said that he's okay to go with mom because child obviously doesn't have withdrawals, doesn't have nothing like a parent, right? Yeah. So, but she insisted, she says, no, I know that she's gonna be risk to him. So she insisted. And that same doctor, because she reported so many, uh, whatever moms and children. So they kicked her out from this hospital. She went somewhere else, but mm -hmm. that doesn't give me my son back. You know what I mean? Yes. But there is doctors uh, who are um, beside faces that CPS doctors that like, uh, they get bonus or whatever. They like calling uh, CPS on, on parents. Mm. And it's also some type of control or whatever, whatever it is. It's a nice, it's this form of narcissistic abuse because controlling others is part of what is important to them. They have an obsessive compulsive disorder that makes them want to control other people's lives. And it's so funny because they're diagnosing you, but they, no one's diagnosing any of these people. So I want to give you, I want to give you an example of what a, the definition of, of what a syndrome is. 
All right, so I'm sure you're familiar with the basic concepts of disease, disorders, syndromes, and conditions. The terms are often used interchangeably, but they actually have different meanings. So let's just get to what a syndrome is. <clears throat> All right, a syndrome is a term that refers to a disease or a disorder that has more than one identifying feature or symptom. In other words, a syndrome is defined as follows. A collection or set of signs and symptoms that characterize or suggest a particular disease. So legal abuse syndrome means you now have a disease, a mental disease, according to these people, based on what they're doing. Oh my goodness, Desiree, you said that that couple was fake. Let me come go back to it again. So you guys, I just want to let you know, Save Our Children is fighting hard for you because they're fighting us overtime in the sense that they're going to the GSM to try and diagnose you as a mental health nut based on the what you're going to. They're putting it as a billable. They, can, it's, it's, they made it billable. So that way now they can make money off of you going there for what they've done. Before it was not a billable. It, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't actually put it out. Uh, Tiana, you work in medical health care. Does anybody else work in health care billing and know why it's important for them to make it billable in their diagnostics. And I'm gonna to get to the new people here tonight after that, because I see we have quite a few new people. Why is what it important the for them to make it billable in their diagnostics? So that way they can get the money for it. Yes. Isn't that pathetic and sick? They wanna make sure that they can make money when you go to explain what this disease is. Okay. So we have some new people here tonight before I go on to the next person, because we've been uh, giving people the business here, making sure you go to court and you look presentable. And we've been critiquing the fake characters that they have up here that are used to try and promote their propaganda. And so we're going to go ahead and watch some more people and but before we do that, is there anybody here who's new tonight? I see UMKC tutoring, and you've made some really great comments over here in the comment section. So this if you don't mind. You, this mahogany. I typed oh. out. Oh. Hey, y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> love y'all. <laughs> we love you, too. Thank you for your comments, mahogany. Okay, Kayleen Hammond. Nice to have you tonight, Miss Kayleen. You can introduce yourself if you'd like. Okay, well, great. I'm going to, you're breaking up a little bit, but feel free to contact us for, for more information. You can call us on our, our line. Um, one eight three three nine three one six four one seven, and we can hear talk to you face to face because we're breaking up a little bit right now. But we would love to hear more from you. Um, our okay, Sally, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Okay, any more introductions here, Miss Araceli? Would you like to to say anything? Or make any comments? No, hi. Um, I'm just new to the group. Uh, I was actually introduced here by Miss Anderson, I believe. Okay, Miss Christina. Yes, our beloved Christina. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what state are you in, Araceli? I'm in Illinois. Illinois. Okay. And have your children been unlawfully removed from you? They have been unlawfully removed, and they went against our religious um, beliefs. And right now, two of my kids are just basically lost somewhere in the foster system, and I have no idea where they are. Oh gosh, mom, I'm so sorry that you have to go through that. We are so sorry. You must really be like, you know, whatever you're feeling, we don't judge you, okay? And another thing, 
we don't believe in any of these diagnostics. Whatever you're feeling is a natural feeling. It's a human emotion that you're supposed to be feeling from being separated. So don't feel like we're going to judge you or put a label on you or anything like that, because we're just here to kind of give you information that you may be able to use. So that way, when you go to court, you're not blindsided by the things that they're doing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, you're so welcome. Araceli, if you would like to um, uh, set up an appointment with me, I'm the reunification counselor. Um, I'm option one, extension one. Extension one. I would love that. Thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. We had a whole thing with our appointments and everything, but we were cyber hacked because we get we get attacked, right? You know, because they don't want us to do what we're doing for people. They don't want us to expose them for the frauds that they are. So we have been cyber attacked. So you have to bear with us for a little bit with our website being down, but um, we're going to be back up soon and you'll be able to get more information about exactly what we do, but we're kind of in the rebuilding stage because we have, we are deplatformed from GoDaddy along with all the other pro-life sites and anything that has to do with child trafficking and exposing all these elite pedophiles. So Oh, wow. Yeah, we really, really, really are. We get so many hits, so many parents coming to us. So they felt threatened by that. So we're, we're still re rebuilding, but email is also the best way to contact us. We have a really good email list. So, all right. Well, so we have Miss Mr. Josh here. Josh, are you new or are you, um, are you somebody that's come here before? <laughs> I'm sorry to ask like that. Uh, hi, I've been here before, but the meeting was canceled. I oh, joined okay. a couple times. Okay, I so where are you at, Josh? Day. Um, I was originally from Michigan, but I got blindsided, railroaded by the courts. Um, she kept attacking me. She was a narcissist. She attacked me with a knife, and they actually gave her a PPO against me and ripped the kids away. And I haven't seen them since. That was over a year ago. Okay. And have you been able to go to court and file any type of documents? I filed, I never got served any summons or anything. Um, I never received the ex parte, any of that, but I did file a motion to object to it. Um, okay. I filed, I filed for custody. And when I got there, the judge basically asked her what I needed to do. And then shortly after I got a hold of you guys and I was told just disregard anything they say. Um, I recently just got an order saying that they held custody hearing and they gave her full legal sole custody and charge. When you say support. her, who is her? I'm not quite sure who that is. Uh, their mom. Okay. She's a full blown narcissist. She's got a history of substance abuse, narcotics dependency, and mental disorder. Okay. So the thing is, is this, we always have to. We, what we have to do is really sorry I didn't on. I didn't hear a word you said oh okay all right so I, I understand where you're coming from you know what the most important thing is to to get your documents in order and to kind of find out what's going on now I want to mention something I'm going to I'm going to show you some more people here on our video you guys from the interview that they're doing with different people so we can learn how to be different remember Intervening acts is something where you are part of the problem. Oh, you look so nice tonight, Desiree. <laughs> yes, intervening act is when you are part of the problem. Mitigating circumstances means you have tried your best to make the best of the circumstances. So how do we, I'm gonna, gonna let you guys be the judge tonight of these people and let you see how their attorneys really aren't helping them because they're putting them out there raw. They're not telling them the things that they need to know to present themselves in the best light. And it comes to how you dress, it comes to your body language, the things that you say, the terminology that you use, are you scratching? Are you looking all around? So we're gonna get back to this and I want you to be the judge. Don't be worried about um, saying something to hurt someone's feelings or saying something that's politically incorrect. I'm gonna put these people back up here and show you and let you criticize them from a, if, if you are the judge and you're trying to decide if this person is really a bad parent or not how would you have difficulty in deciding if they were part of the problem so let's get let's get right to it <clears throat> all right so share screen going back to my youtube where i was before 
Okay. Okay, here's the YouTube right here. Let me put this in. Let's make it big. Okay. We're gonna go with this guy. He's here now. Well, I'll play this for a minute. I'm gonna take care of two kids at one time. And uh we bonded. I mean, we really bonded and, and I'm I'm still feeling real bad about it even to this day while my children are not with me. And I've done everything that these people ask me. Every time I complete a program, they throw another one out there. Doing the whole battery of the three-year test, I think one came back, uh, they said dirty, but then come back clean right after that. Okay. And the first one I knew was dirty with alcohol. Sorry. I don't have any drug test that was dirty during the whole time that I was in there. Okay. So what did he do wrong and what did he do right, you guys? Come on, you're the judge here and if don't. He if, if he said his urine was dirty, why would he just repeat it? Act like um something that it wasn't gonna be clean at all. That's why I feel like these people are actors. It was terrible. You gotta pay attention to his eyes, the way they were blinking. Look mm -hmm. to his lips and everything, how he was moving them and everything. And then like, you can see like he was trying to read a cue card. Look at him. Go Ooh. back and look at it slowly. These let's people are back. actors. I'm gonna go back and um, let's, let's rewind here and slow down for a minute. Let me see if I get my settings to, to go slower. Okay, playback speed. All right, let's slow it down for a minute. And uh, we bonded. I mean, we really bonded, and, and I'm, I'm still feeling real bad about it, even to this day, while my children are not with me. You're rambling. And I've done everything. There it goes. His cue cards are on the left. Yep. Yes. And they trust. Throw another or on one his left. You're right. right. You called it. Three year test. I think one came. There you go. You saw that part right there. Why are you blinking your eyes? Usually when someone blinks their eyes like that, that means they're lying. Yeah. Coming up with a lie. So now you have, you know, he's, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fashionista. So if you're going to do a documentary, you all, and you're, you have the money, right, to have a professional camera and to, to drag all these different people that you've met to do a documentary, why is he sitting here in the wrinkled shirt? I, I, and I'm real petty, okay? I'm going to be the petty one. That's a, a great call. You know what? I look past <laughs> that. I just went straight towards his face and his lips and the eyes. But you got a good call in the shirt. I see the wrinkles. Yeah. Yes, you guys, no wrinkled T-shirts and no T-shirts at all, even if it's, if it's completely pressed. What does a T-shirt say? Oh, I need, to get, I need to get my... um. Hey, and also, you guys, this is a quick note. It, if he wasn't a liar, one flaw he had was admission to the liquor, which yeah. is not guilty. And you guys, nothing we do as a free American is guilt, okay? Why do you we, go up there and say that? Exactly. You know, they keep trying to tell us what to do, and we're not in Nazi Germany. And quit acting like it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's it's dirty because you had some liquor. You can drink. It's not against the law to have liquor. So how is that dirty? And it's none of their business. And it's their not business a law. if you did or not. Exactly. Yeah, it was dirty. I have some liquor. That's incriminating. It's called self. But it makes the audience think that he's an alcoholic because he mentioned it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so he's like, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. I'm admitting it. That, that, I, that's not helping at all, really. Not helping. So this is the thing. Yeah, Teresa. You to do. Teresa, you had something to say? And the first one I knew was yes. dirty with alcohol. Mm -hmm. I don't have any drug tests. You can go ahead, Teresa. I'm letting it play in the background. I was in there. Because okay. I, I don't agree with I don't agree with y'all what y'all saying about the way he look or anything. And I'm like okay. my heart mm -hmm. because my cousins told me the reason why I lost my children is because the way I dress. So what did they say? How what did they say? And you don't think it's right? I mean, because this is all no judgment here. Everyone can have their opinion. So please share your opinion, Teresa. Okay, my my opinion is is. It's not always about the way you dress. It's the people got to be around, the one that's judging you, they have to be around you to know who you really are. It's not always about the way you dress. It's your act, it's actions, it's um, the way you love your family or your children or whatever. So I, I disagree with that. I disagree with, you know, and if you drinking and stuff, you shouldn't do that or get high because I don't do none of that. But 
the way he looks, he looks fine to me. Long as he clean, I don't care if he got on mixed match uh, pants that don't match or different colored socks. It's all about um, how he loves his family. And, did, he, um, did he mention any of that in his and what he was talking about? No, I'm talking about what y'all were saying, you know, about his T-shirt and stuff like that. I'm just saying, you know, what y'all were saying. I don't, I just don't agree with it. Teresa, you know what? I don't agree with it either. But when you go to court, if you have somebody sitting across from you who is going to be that way, would you want to take a chance and say, hey, he shouldn't judge me like this. I'm just going to go as I am because he shouldn't judge me. Well, then maybe that's why I lost my kids then, because I wore what I had. I'm just, I'm going to keep it real, y'all. I wore what I had. I don't care if I had on a robe and my gown. I would have wore it. If that's what I had, I mean, it is what it is. But I don't think that's, I don't think it's cool. And I know y'all don't think it's cool either, but it is what it is. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it got nothing to do with being parents, but. Hey, I'm just being honest. I agree. I agree. But if we expect them to act as a higher authority, I guess we have to engage as if they are. Therefore, we have to dress in such a manner. But yeah. when we go to church, then, okay, if that's the case, God says, come as you are. Why we, I mean, why is it so different? A true higher power out? would recognize this and oversee what you're wearing. Okay. But what if but, but what if some, but what if but what if some of us can't afford the attire? They like I, I'm with Teresa. They shouldn't judge us. They're not true higher authorities, is why. Okay. okay that's guys. the only way to explain it. Have you ever all thought about this? What if this all the whole decision to uh, do do what they want to do to these people has already been predetermined? Did you guys ever think about that? And that's they already had in too. mind. I, I'm here to give the, the tough truth. It's not some, you know, all the things that you're saying are valid. Okay. It doesn't, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just telling you the truth because people are judging you based on your appearance and you don't need to give them that. You can go to the thrift store and get mm -hmm. yourself something to wear to court because when you're going to court, it's not time to just be yourself and to express yourself and just to roll out of bed and just, hey, just don't just, yeah. that's not, time for that this is we're dealing name. with fictitious we're dealing with fictitious power remember that right so this is a fictitious i story. think and the way to put it is that for them it's a power trip it's a way for them to get power where in reality they don't have any power over us so that's how it goes to back that it's not the higher power they believe that they're the higher power so for them it's a power trip to be able to judge and like see you and see how you talk and stuff like that because like I like me, I'm Hispanic, so I feel like they use my as I have a little accent and stuff like that, and to use it against us in in courts and cases and, and you everything an that goes on. But an accent, I don't think that that is. And they may be that kind of person, but we're not talking about accent here. That's where you're from, and that's to be expected. You know, uh, I'm sorry. What, what about your the way you're like where you live? Your area code, they yeah, do judge you by that. And I was telling Mahogany the other other day that it's going to be very difficult for us to get your children placed with you when you're living in a really really dangerous drug infested yeah. area. By See, in, in that, that goes back to my accent. I feel like they realize that I have a stronger Chicago accent because they realize that I come from a poor neighborhood. That again, they, it goes back to judging w whether you have money or not, if you have resources or not, and that's again where they get that power trip. Okay, Tiana, I see you got your hand raised. I don't want to wait too long because other people are just talking. Yes, I just wanted to. I, I just wanted to say I'll be very short. I just wanted to say regarding the dressing. Um, I was judged. I mean, but not the way I dress, and I I think it has lots of to do like. I was raised that you dress for every place there is a dress, right? If exactly. you go out or to play, you wear one thing. And when we go to church, we dress uh, not to impress or to because for other people, but you go there for with respect. So you uh, you you really have you are careful what you're wearing. You don't put too much makeup. You're not really. Cut 
<laughs> and when you go to court too, it was all, uh, always nicely just because I went there and I respected court, even though they, are, they disrespect court, like judges and attorneys and stuff. But I wanted to show respect to the, um, like uh, where I'm going to, even when you're going to doctors and stuff, that's how I was raised. It doesn't have the nothing to do with well. judging them. But I did, I did make mistake like Teresa, when I went there, I, um, I, I do believe only God can judge me. And I told them everything. They asked me, I would tell them. Even my attorney said, why did you tell them? And I said, why not? They're not the one buy, buying me. You know, I always have this thing. If you don't feed me, if you don't pay my rent, if you don't have me, like, who are you to judge me? That's my, you know, but uh, now, like, I wouldn't do those things because I learned from my mistake. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and because yes, God is just going to judge me, but I don't have to tell everything to everyone. I mean, yeah. like, you know, yeah. So who are the I learned that. You know your business because you want privacy, right? And, and we're talking about how yes. to reclaim our privacy and that's by not divulging yes. information. I'm learning that now that it's not, none, of people, uh, none of their business, like what do I do or do I do it in my free time? You they know? wouldn't tell so, you what they're doing. They won't tell you where they live or what they're up to or who they're dating. Ask them and see if they'll tell you. I guarantee you they will not. Right, yes. Yeah, so. And you and they act like yeah, they're your friend, why. right? They're your friend, but you're the only one talking about yourself. Yes, right? <laughs> so, and oh. uh, like, so that's my two cents. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. I want to just say something real quick before I move on to the next two people. And I, and I hope the next two people will answer this question. If this was your judge and she looked like this, right? And you, you're not supposed to judge her. You're not supposed to judge her, okay? Because no one's supposed to be judging. But if you went to court and your judge looked like this, what would you think? I mean, let's be honest here, you guys. If that was your judge when you went to court, what would you really be thinking? And, and it's unprofessional. Yes. It's unacceptable. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We got. I'm sorry. Was that Christina? Yes, I said it'd be kangaroo court. <laughs> Thinking this is not. This is a joke. See, sometimes the reason why we take them seriously, this is how they probably look on the weekends. Because a lot of them uh, wear wigs and they go to drag queen shows. The the court, the judges and everything. They they do the same things. They have tattoos. They have piercings, but you wouldn't know it in the courtroom. So you automatically have respect for them. They don't show up like that. But what do we do? We show up just like we are, don't we? Because we're like, screw it. They shouldn't be judging anybody. But what if your judge showed up like this, you guys? I'm going to let you go ahead and, and comment. Hey, so I, I went to court in a nice suit and it didn't make a difference, you guys. These people have an ulterior motive. It's not the way it, you should go to court expecting them to respect you so yes i would suggest to get dressed as much as possible exactly it's not it's not for them it's for you but i did go in trump shoes okay let me tell you how dressed the, and how fancy i looked and it didn't make a goddamn difference with these people so yes you guys guess what? I, I, and i understand you know where you're coming from because me too you know, I can say the same thing, but when it becomes a pattern and a behavior and it is what you always do, there is going to come that day where they do notice. It's mm -hmm. always it's when you're doing it in private. It's when you've been doing it every day. Then one day when you're not expecting someone to notice, they do. OK, so it's not it may not have happened before, but what I don't want you to do is get into the habit of doing things like this. Or maybe someone invites you to, to on an interview from Save Our Children and say, oh, we want to interview for something like this. And then you see everyone like that. And then you're thinking, OK, well, I'll just show up like this, too. You have to raise the standard. Raise the standard already. OK. OK, so what is. Can I say something? Else? Yes. OK, everybody, we're going to court pro se. So we're held to the same standards as an attorney would be held. So you don't see an attorney showing up in yoga pants and a sweatshirt. I'm the first to wear yoga pants and sweatshirts. I wear it all day, every day. But when you go to court, you need to have yourself fixed. You can get an outfit at Walmart. To create my ISP. You guys, so, should, you, should, you, should you really, 
I'm going to be tough here. And and like Lori Beth said, you can get stuff from Walmart and the thrift store too. Or borrow something from somebody's closet. Or eBay or borrow something. Yes. But you it's are held to the same standards as an attorney when we go to court. So present yourself as you were an attorney. Because I'm, I'm pretty damn sure, well, I would not want this person in this courtroom right here as my judge representing me. So know it, own it, and wear it, and let's get on and win this lawsuit, guys. Come yes, on. you guys. And also, if, you're, if you come like this and all of the rest of us are dressed up, then you're going to stand out. You're not going to look like you belong to, as part of the class in, action. In eyes, because we're, we're letting you know right now we're going to come correct. Of... I'm going to keep going here things that need one more person one more criticism um i will say that but then because we don't spare anybody around here uh, let's reschedule a meeting that's another problem hold on you know for fact that somebody has done everything Mel, this mahogany can you hear me yes i just had a comment about when we were just talking about clothing and whatnot like i said i don't know where everybody at but just maybe they could google they local um look up like dress for success, yes. I think it's called Connections yes. to Success. Uh, it's a little agency out here. They actually got like a mobile boutique. I don't know what state they in. It be, they be having like luxury. They having to sell tomorrow at actually designer stuff, like up to $25. So <laughs> look up those people because when you're looking for work and stuff, different little organizations and places in the communities, they will give us like suits and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And yes, exactly. Just make it happen. Yeah. And, and, and everyone just do what everyone do what they're supposed to do, because you don't know when that day is coming. And see, when judgment day comes, we don't know when it's going to be right. We know that we've been to these other courts and they've been certain way. And this court may make you feel like, well, no one cares. No one's watching. No one cares anyway. So why bother? Because I, I did it and it didn't work. So that's 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 what they want us to feel like. Hey, what you do, it, it, it doesn't matter. But then again, they are, you, you know what it is that I'm, I'm, I'm critical of? Why didn't their attorney tell them that? What, what made their attorney feel like, oh, I shouldn't mention this to them because that would be politically incorrect, right? Eat peanut butter. And um, so regarding What's going on with this girl's outfit? And dressing up for like for higher authority and stuff so yeah, if people yeah. have like supervised visits does that mean yeah. that we should probably dress up for those as well or is this just for like court or I yeah. remember with with what um tj was saying every place has a different type of dress code so you may not wear a suit to a visit with your children because that wouldn't be appropriate if you're going to be at the park and playing around but you want to, you still, would you want to wear something like this to a visit with your children? Let's not talk about court here. Let's just talk about visiting your children. Is this, is this okay? I'm, I'm, I'm super critical here. So I'm going to go last. And because did she just used some profanity. Game over. No, no, no. No. Should you use profanity during a visit? Never, ever, ever, ever. Nope. They recorded no. you. Exactly. You can, it's your right. But should you really? Same rules apply, guess what? You can be recording them, they can use it against you in evidence. It's like you can use whatever against them in evidence. You gotta be mindful about what you do. Cameras <laughs> is everywhere. Yes, okay, and what else about her, her, her attire, you guys? There's nothing wrong with what she's wearing, by the way, but it could be better. Let's talk, let's, let's talk real here. I'm gonna teach you how to win and how to dress for success. I'm not gonna just tell you how to get it, to do barely enough to get by. We go, no, and he, and, and what's going said, on here? Who, what are you talking about? He said, try to trick me. Her piercings in her face. Her oh, she, piercings in her face. Because that doesn't have to be there. Is that really important? You know, sometimes you want to, to express ourselves, but is that really, is now the time to express your artistic and creativity? No, it doesn't matter. No. no. <laughs> and well, also, you go. guys, I'm going to be very old fashioned here. This is too much skin. You got the arms, you got all of this, you got a little bit of cleavage going on. I can see you got some, some breast disease. Then you got your other arm out. This is too much. Even if it's hot outside, I'm, this is we're, we're like Amish people. Cover it up because the more covered you are, the more people respect you. I went for three years in and out of Fort Mill, and I always dressed 
like if I was going to church. That's one of my Sundays back. And I still don't think it made much of a difference. But <laughs> <I still do. laughs> huh, you guys have got to mute somebody. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's where it's supposed to have been. <laughs> can, you, can everyone mute their phone quickly? Okay. So who was talking? Someone said they went to court. Oh, that was, this was Christy Knight. Yeah, I, I went to court for three years and I always dressed in my Sunday's best. I made sure my hair was nice, you know, done up presentably and it. stuff like that. But it, it just didn't make any difference in my case because they already had it in their mind that they were going to take the kids and nobody could stop them. So, and, and, I, and I appreciate all these real stories. This is real. There's going to be times where you do your best and you do everything you're supposed to do. And they still don't uh, do what they're supposed to do. And I still, even beyond that, want you to still keep doing it. I still want you to keep dressing up. I still want you to cover your body. No short shorts. When if, even if you're going to the park to play with your kids, your children, excuse me, I, I messed up saying that. And call your call your children children. Don't let them get into you into the bad habit like I was as well of calling their your children kids. Because they they this they call them kids. That's their word. You want to call them children. Okay. Kid is a baby goat. It's a baby goat, and the goat god is Lucifer. Okay. So remember you all. Let's not use their language. All right. So this is the old lawsuit. We're going to be. This is not the old lawsuit. This has the old names on it. Okay, so if your name is not up here, then you need to talk to me and make sure it's up here because we're going to be sending it out this week. I just have some highlights of some things that I'm making to make some small changes, and then I'm going to be calling everyone. But we did make, uh, we're, we're making everything a lot more professional now. So I just want to give you guys a look at how we are establishing I didn't see my name out. Okay, let me write that down. So let me go back up here to names and anybody whose names is not on the lawsuit, then let me know right now because this is the old lawsuit with the names. So if you join the old lawsuit, then you may need to give me your name. I can't really um, see. I hear a whole bunch of numbers. I can't see. Okay, can everybody mute their phone? I can't. I can't see. I don't know if my name's supposed to be on there, Mel. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, let me just I don't see. see my name either. Okay. All right. Let me get down. I don't see my name either, Mel. Okay. Who is that? Christina Singleton. Christina Anderson. And, and then Christina Singleton. Okay. Christina Singleton. Oh, yeah, my name ain't on there. Okay, no, because uh, anybody who came, this is from the very, very, very early stages, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, Christina Anderson, Christina Singleton, Natasha Loach. Okay, who else wants me to put them, their name up there? Uh -oh, Dana Davis. I'm not on there. Dana Davis. Okay, who else? Elaine Wells. Go ahead. Elaine Wells. Renisha Tomlin. Wells. Renisha, you're up there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you're right here, Renisha. You've been up there. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh huh. My last name needs to be changed, Mel. Okay, change. Uh, Lori Beth's last name. Are you doing Berlin? Absolutely, ma'am. All righty. Okay. Who else did I leave off? Deanna yeah. Robinson. Should the new people just contact yeah, you after no. the meeting? My name's not on there. Yes, if you're completely new, like today is your first day and I haven't gotten your file or anything like that, then it'd be better if you contacted me after the meeting, which would be tomorrow because um, we have business hours and it would be past business hours to continue. Mel, I put my work email up in the chat so people can, you know, whoever needs anything can email me and then I can pass it on to you or whatever we need to do. Okay, so please email Lori. That's going to be the best way. She's got her email in the chat. Grab her email, copy and paste it, and send her your email, your address, and your phone number. 
And why do we need your address? Because we mail out notebooks, we mail out things all the time. So, and also we have to have it for the, this is a legal document. So we have to have your actual information. So send it to her, we're gonna add you to the email list and then we're going to uh, make sure you're on the lawsuit, okay? We're gonna, get all, we're gonna get your affidavit as well. And after this, you guys, we're actually not adding any more people because we have to file this. So you are lucky if you came here tonight because this is the cutoff point. And we can, we just can't add anymore. We're just literally at our limit. So. Well, I think I have one other person that was in, but she was having a hard time hearing. So, um, but they were very interested. I gave her your number and she's supposed to call you tomorrow. Okay, well, if I haven't filed it yet, then I'll certainly add her. Just tell her to hurry, hurry, hurry. And maybe pass Lori Best's email along to her as well, just in case you can't get in touch with me on the phone. Now, I wanted to say one thing, you guys. You're not going to be able to hear from me for the rest of the week because I have to write this document, okay? At some point in time, I just have to cut the phone off, cut off all the distractions, no TV, no cell phone, no nothing, and just write. And when people call and I start talking about their issue, then I forget about what I was writing. So that's the reason why I have to just for this week. Don't feel like I neglected or abandoned you or anything like that. But if you want to talk to someone, call Lori, because I will not be available for the rest of the week because I want to get your lawsuit done. OK, it wouldn't be fair if I stopped and started talking about this and that and the lawsuit never got done. I have to finish it. And as you know, sometimes you just have to, to get down to the bare um, to brass tacks and cut off everything and just type and type and type. So if you have anything, call Lori. And if it's really urgent, she'll pass the message along to me because I will not be answering the phone. Hey, I still haven't received my package. I don't know. If, um, when, when did you? Yeah, I still haven't gotten it in the mail. I will have to do the, I will have to look at the tracking number, Natasha, and I will also send you the tracking number so you can track it. Okay. I, I think I sent you the tracking number though, did I not? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, okay. I, I, I have it saved <laughs> on my I have it saved on my USPS account. So I'll just go back and check that. All right. Do we have any more okay. questions? I think Deanna had a question. I I I wasn't on the laws. Okay. Yep. I have you written down, Deanna, to add you. Did you get your, your packet, Deanna? Okay. Thanks. You got your, your yeah, yeah, I've got it. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I never got no package either. Oh, Josh, you're new. So what's your last name? Head. No, I did all the affidavits and all that. I've, I've been with you guys for a while. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Contact Lori tomorrow with your information so we can call you I'm, and follow I'm up. I'm sending an email right now to her. Okay, great. I, I'm the one that sent you the one about the International Court of Justice. Oh, that was you. So if you get a chance, I'd really like to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you about that. That I would got be some great. Great ideas. Okay, I appreciate you come approaching it from that angle. Mel, I have a I have a quick question on something. I okay. do too. Go ahead, Ma. Um, my grandson was illegally adopted and I have a granddaughter that has the same symptoms and same things that's going on with her. Can anyone or you may tell me how go back getting these records from doctor to doctor? So you want to get the records from the doctor? Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, the, the child has been illegally adopted and the foster parents well, that adopted him are playing hardball with us. In, in, in what sense are they playing hardball? They don't want to take and give them up. And I can understand not giving them to the mother, but they should be able to give them doctor to doctor, but they don't want us to know anything and vice versa, which I have Elaine Wales on here with us tonight. Yeah. This is my daughter. Hi, oh. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yes, I can. Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Elaine Wells, and I have been fighting for my son for a very long time. And I just want to say I want to praise you and Lori Best so much for thanking you and oh. doing this for my lawsuit, because I can honestly cannot tell you how I feel that this is going to happen. Like, I'm just so thankful yeah. for you. But yes, ma'am, <laughs> I have a daughter that has the pretty much the same issues that my oldest son has. And we're having a really hard time trying to get any kind of documentation. Well, the good thing about, um, I think if you really want to get some documentation, you would have to 
to go to a court and get the judge to order them to give you the documentation. That's where you're at right now. Okay. Yeah, you have to do that. If they're not, if they're playing hardball and they're not giving you the information you need and you're concerned about their health and what safety and you as a mother still have, we, we, you know, we would have to talk about your case and see where they're at and how much rights you still have. But you, um, if they're not complying with your request then you have to take it to the next level, which means filing a claim in court, um, an injunction, um, or some type of a, a writ to make them to do something. But I, I, I think we, we need to kind of have a ch conversation and talk more in detail about your case, because it sounds like you have a couple things going on there. So I don't want to uh, give you too much advice without knowing all those details. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, definitely. But we want to help you. And the most important thing is just to, is, yeah. is to, um, to remember to approach everything from a legal standpoint. They speak a different language than us. So when we kind of just talk normally, they don't get it. So we got to find out what type of motion that we do to get them to compel them to provide these documents. Yes, ma'am. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. All right, you all. Do I have any more comments before we get on to our scripture for tonight? Okay, so can I have someone, let's see how much, let me see how long this is. Okay. Let me see if there's any. Is it, uh, okay, so let's start here. This is going to be a little bit better. And so, yes, can I have someone read the scripture for tonight? And I pray that everyone to, to just relax to hear it as a bedtime story. This is not gonna be like a short scripture, like just read a real scripture real quick and just run off. We're gonna really read the Bible and we're gonna read the whole chapter. So this is the book of Job chapter two. And just to give you a little bit of a background, <clears throat> Job, was he lived in the land of us. He was honest and innocent of any wrong. So the man that we're gonna talk about that the devil has is gonna do all these things to, he was honest and innocent of any wrong. He honored God and stayed away from evil. So this isn't a person who deserved anything. So we're going to hear about what happened to Job. And it's going to give you some insight into how to handle the situation that you're going on right now. So let me um, give you a little bit more background information that I'm going to let um, Malachi or someone else read the scripture. Okay, so Job's sons took turns holding feasts in their homes and they invited their sisters to eat and drink. One day the angels came to show themselves before the Lord. Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, I have been wandering around the earth. I have been going back and forth. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? No one else on the earth is like him. He is an honest man and innocent of any wrong. He honors God and stays away from evil. But Satan answered God and said, Job honors God for a good reason. You have put a wall around him and his family and everything he owns. You have blessed all the things that he has done. So his flocks of the sheep and his cattle of herds are large. So what is what is the what's going on right now between God and Satan? What's what's happening, you guys? A friendly wager is occurring. A friendly wager is occurring. And what are they you know, betting this, on? You know, this kind of reminds me of that's why I was yes. smiling in the background. You guys ever seen the movie Trading Places with the Dukes, where they actually took a wager over the dollar? Eddie Murphy uh, movie back in the day. Yes, yes. Yes, that's kind of, that's, this story reminds me of that a little bit. Like, basically saying, like, this is my righteous servant. He's not going to turn his back on me. And then, you know, saying it's like, okay, cool. Let me have him for a couple of, couple of days. I'm going to test him. He's a guy, but you can't kill him. Yes. So it's a trial going on. He's being tried. So how many of you all have ever felt that you're going through a trial that's not really of this world? It's bigger. It's bigger than what they're saying it really is. It's much deeper than that. Do you feel like you're being tried by Satan right now? Yes. I do. Okay. I know I do. Who else feels that way? And why do you feel that way? I think I feel like that because I was speaking with my husband yesterday regarding our case and I told him I feel like the only reason CPS was even allowed into our lives was because we failed as a family to stand together and we all turned against each other yeah. and I feel like that our Satan saw that weakness and that's how I ended up CPS ended up going into our lives 
And it's funny that this came up because I was literally our conversation yesterday. Wow, that's pretty incredible. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, and really the spirit does. comes yeah, and, and it kind of affirms things, right? So he'll, it'll come and tell one person the, the same thing and tell somebody else. So again, you all, you can be completely blameless. You can have generational curses in your family. And what happens now is that the people in your household are going to be the ones that got the, the enemy uses to test you, right? Now, you know what? I have, an, I have another scripture that I wanted to share with you in Revelations before we go, but it's going to talk about how it's going to be brother against sister. It's going to be households, you know, divided, you know, that who's choosing God and who's not. And, and, and God wants you to make a real choice. Do you love him or do you love the people who are supposed to be your brother, sister, mom, dad, the people who have had the title of family, but don't really have the heart of a family member, Right. Or do you put God first? So let's see what happens. So let me go ahead and um, get to the scripture here. So um, could you please start reading from here? Sure. Satan appears before God. One day the angels came to show them before the Lord. Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Why have you come from, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, I've been wandering around the earth. I've been going backwards and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you not noticed my servant Job? No one else on earth is like him. He is an honest man and innocent of any wrong. He honors God and stays away from evil. But Satan answered God, Job honors God for, God's, for a good reason. You have put a wall around him, his family, and everything he I'm owns. Always, uh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> uh, All right. Daisy. Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm at 14. No, I'm, I'm actually at a... Okay. At 10, yeah. Sorry 10? about that. Okay, okay. You have put a wall up around him, his family and friend, his family and everything he owns. You have blessed the things he has done. So his flocks of sheep and herds of cattle are large. They almost cover the land, but reach out your hand and destroy everything he has. Then he will curse you to your face. Then oh. the Lord said to Satan, all right, then. Everything Job has in power but you must not touch Job himself. Then Satan left the Lord's presence. One day Job's son and daughters were eating and drinking wine together. They were at their oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were eating grass nearby and the Sibians attacked and carried them away. They killed the servants with swords and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. The messenger was still speaking when another messenger came in, he said, lightning from God fell from the sky. It burnt up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Then a second messenger was still speaking when another messenger came in. He said, the Babylonians sent in three groups of attackers. They swept down and stole your camels. They killed the servants. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. The third messenger was still speaking. And then another messenger came in. He said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine together. They were at the oldest brother house. Suddenly, a great wind came in from the desert. It struck all four corners of the house at once. The house fell in on your sons and daughters, and they all are dead. And I'm the only one escaped to tell you. Okay, can I pause right there for a second? Sure. You guys, what's happening? How many reports is he going to get? Did the devil just come and hit him with one bad thing? Or how did he do it? He hit him with everything he had. Yeah, he hit him with everything he had. He ambushed him, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse to the point where his own children were killed. Can you believe that? I don't know how. I mean, this is when I heard this story, I said, God, are you sure that you're really God if you would allow this to happen? What kind of God? I had questions. I mean, I admit I had questions. This seems a bit extreme for someone who's been honest and been your good servant. Is this how you, is this how they get treated? Okay, let's continue. When Job heard this, he got up to show how sad he was. Mm -hmm. He tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he bowed down to the ground to worship God. He said, I was naked when I was born and I will be naked when I die. The Lord gave these things to me, and he has taken them away. Praise the name of the Lord. And okay, all of this. Stop. Okay. 
you guys. So how many of us would have reacted? How many of us reacted like Job when we went through our crisis? Let's tell the truth. Did we do like that? Well, honestly, I had the church on my side, so I really was doing that. Okay. Amen. And if you were, then, hey, that is amazing. All right. How how many of us have been praising the Lord's name, even though he took something away from us that he gave us? He gave us the children, then he took them away. I feel like for me, we were very religious at the surface, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this experience has not only led me further from God at one point, but I also realized the further I was getting from God, the further I was getting from my children, if that makes any sense. It does. And, And then I realized I started praying with faith again. I started crying to God. I started talking to God. Because I still remember when I was doing my catechism classes back when I was a child, my catechism teacher would always tell us that she doesn't talk and she doesn't pray. That she cries, she talks, she screams to Mm -hmm. God and she's even admitted to even cussing God out before. Mm -hmm. And she's like, this is a raw relationship with God that we should carry. And I, now that I'm older, now that I'm going through all these challenges and obstacles in my own personal life, I'm realizing how deep her her teaching really was that day. Yes, that is so incredible. Thank you so much. And that's true, you guys. This is a, a real relationship. Now, if you're not even speaking to God, then that would be worrying. But when you're, you know, we have examples of David when he cried out to God and Jacob who wrestled with God and and Job who's blameless. People handle things in different ways. You may not be, you may not be perfect. Maybe you sinned during this time and you turned your back on God. There's somebody in the Bible that represents all of us and different experiences that we, ways that we respond to these things. So I'm not saying you have to be perfect like Job, but what I'm saying is that these are the trials that you're going to go through. And as long as you're having that real relationship with God, because he knows how you feel anyway, even if you don't say the curse word, even if you don't say, God, if you don't give me my children back, this is the last time I'm going to pray to you. He knows what's in your heart anyway. So have that real relationship and let the feelings flow. This is not the judgmental type of, you know, thing you're used to with people and with the courts and with the social workers, this is time to be raw. And that when you open up to him like that, now you can face these people without feeling like you have to pour your feelings out to them because you've already cried out to God and told him everything and had that little talk with Jesus and told him all about your troubles. Okay. So let's keep going here. Oh, but one thing I wanted to mention you guys, let's look, let's look at the footnotes. What is another name for Satan? We call him Satan or the devil, but what is his real name? Accuser. The accuser. Isn't that funny that his name is the accuser and we're going through all the accusations that we're going through? Isn't that a coincidence? Okay, let's keep going here. In all of this, Job did not sin. He did not blame God. Okay. Here we are. All right. Satan appears before God again. On, an, on another day, the angels came to show themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, what have you come from? Satan answered, Lord, I've been wandering around the earth, and I've been going back and forth in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you noticed my servant, Satan? Jo- I'm sorry. Ooh, devil's <laughs> a lie. Devil's a lie. Yes, he, he a is. a damn lie. I rebuke thee. Yes. Then the Lord said to Satan, then the Lord said to Satan, have you not known my servant Job? No one else on earth is like him. He is an honest man. Innocent of any wrong, he honors God and stays away from evil. You caused me to ruin him for no good reason, but he continues to be with him without blame. Okay, stop you guys. Listen to that. So we hear what how the devil is treating us and we see how the devil is treating us. But what is God saying about you? What is he? What is his report about you? What is he really thinking about you? Let's see what he says. He honors God and stays away from evil. He's advocating for you. He's taking up for you the whole time. He knows that all these things aren't true. You think that God's listening to all that crap that the devil has to say about you? He's not. 
you caused me to ruin him for no good reason. So he admit that he's going through and that he's her, that his servant is having problems based on the devil wanting to sift him like wheat and to test him, right? So let's go ahead and finish this up here. I'm not going to interrupt anymore. I'm hold my peace. <laughs> it's okay. You're fine. One skin for another, Saint answered. A man will give all he has to save his own life, but reach out your hand and destroy his own flesh and his bones. Then he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, all right, then Job is yours. Job is in your power, but you must not, but you must leave him alive. So Satan left the Lord's presence and he put painful sores all over Job's body, then went from top of his head to the soles of his feet. Then Job took a piece of the broken pottery and he used it to scrape himself. And he sat in the ashes to show how upset he was. Job's wife says to him, are you still trying to stay innocent? You should just curse God and die. Mm. Job answered. Mm, 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 mm. You this are talking. Life, yes. <laughs> wow. Jezebel spirit for a second. Mm -hmm. You are talking like a foolish woman. <laughs> should we take only good things from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Job's three friends. Now, Job had three friends. They were Eliphaz, Temanite, and Baldad, the, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namanite. These friends heard about the troubles that had happened to Job, so they agreed to meet and go see Job. They wanted to show him they were upset for him, too, and they wanted to comfort him. They saw Job from far away, but he looked so differently, they almost didn't recognize him. They began to cry loudly. They tore their robes and put dirt on their heads to show how sad they were. Then they sat on the ground with Job seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him. This was because they saw how much he was suffering. All right, we're getting to the end here. Their, his friends couldn't help him. They wanted to, though. They really did. They just had to sit there and they were just like, you know what? We're going to fast with you and, and help you and lift you up. But um, I have a, I have nothing to say at this point in time. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's finish this up here. Job curses his birth. After seven days, Job spoke. He cursed the day he had been born. Job said, let the day I was born be destroyed and destroy the night when it said a boy is born. Let this day turn to darkness. Let God not even care about it, but let light shine on. Don't let light shine on that day. Let darkness and gloom have that day. Let a okay, cloud hide. Yes. I'm going to skip to the next part, you guys, because he goes on for a long time with this lamentation. So let me see if I can get to the good part here. Okay. Because things do, things do turn around for Job. Okay. Let's see. I didn't realize this story was so long when I selected it. <laughs> okay. He's still praying here. It's a very long prayer. Um, let's see. All right, you guys, I'm not going to, I'm actually, I think the, the whole book of Job goes on about his suffering. So we're not going to uh, finish that up tonight like I had planned. But who can tell me how the story ended for those Bible scholars out there? God. He kept the faith as God, man. And... Of course, this was right before Jeremiah 29, 11, for I have plans to prosper you. And he knew God always had a plan for him. He didn't turn his back. And then Satan saw that. He fleed like a coward, just like they eventually will do with our court case. They are fleeing already. And, and what did God do for him? For How did he restore him back to what he had after he took all those things away? Who knows the end of the story? He gave him double for his purple. That's right. He gave him double. He gave him back all the children, back all the land, all the, the, now you're like, how can you replace children? Uh, hey, this is a Bible story. So, you know, this was back in the day when they had maybe 30 children, but I'm not making any excuses here, but I'm just telling you that God restored him back because of his faithfulness. And even Job cracked, you know, after a while, he never sinned, but he did start cursing his own life. You guys, it gets hard out here. So don't, um, don't think that I take lightly what we're going through. This is major, okay? So, um, Teresa, do you want to make a comment before I go to the last scripture? 
Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I want to make a comment. Um, It's about, uh, you said that uh, you ain't going to um, answer any um, phone calls uh, for the next week. You got to, I just wrote you, so read what I wrote you, okay? On the, um, okay. in your phone, in your your phone, I just sent it to you in your email, okay? So don't forget. I sure won't. Did you have a chance to read the affidavit that we wrote for you? And, yeah, and that's what that's about. Okay, great. Well, I will definitely check on that tonight. And I will, if I have to reach out to you, I will certainly call you. So that way, you know, we can talk about it. I just, I'm just letting everyone know that, you know, I yeah, will not. Something I wrote, something you wrote on here, it wasn't, it wasn't um, correct. I think it was a misunderstanding. So I think that's why I need you to write me that. I mean, uh, okay. we gotta meet tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Great. Okay, so <clears throat> guys, we're living in a time. I'm gonna let you guys um, answer, ask some questions, but we're living in a time where we're at the, the very finals of the exam. Final exam. You've had a lot of tests throughout your life, but now we're at the finals exam and it's harder than it's ever been. This is not normal what we're going through. This is extreme. But many people have been tortured and for the sake of who they are because they are one of the true children of Israel. And the devil knows who you are, even though you your ancestry may not have been communicated to you because he's been trying to hide it from you and put you in a family full of demons who don't want you to know who you are and who they, they forgot who they are. But at the same time, if you can get through this and realize that there is something on the other side of this and don't let these people convince you that there's something wrong with you. They want to tell you that, you know, you're depressed or you're, you have anxiety or you have some type of disorder It's very important that you guys put your faith in God and not put your faith in these doctors who 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 have a different mentality of how they want to treat you and 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 they've already kind of shown you that they want to make you a perpetual dependent upon them and always find something wrong with you okay so um i see renisha and has her hand raised and so does eleni and christina oh renisha do you want to say something uh yeah so um i was trying to call you earlier today but um then you said you're not going to take no calls. Um, but I had a few questions. Okay. So I don't know what to do. Do I just wait? Okay. Until this is what I'll do, you guys. Tomorrow I'll be open for phone calls one more day, and then I'll just do Wednesday through Friday. So that way, if you, anybody has any lingering phone calls, we can go ahead and talk about it because you may have had something you want to say. So I'm going to keep the phone lines open till tomorrow and then Wednesday through Friday, I'll, I'll get in, get down to business. How does that sound? Okay. And so you, the number that I already have that I've been calling you on that will be working tomorrow. Which I'm number sorry. is that? I'm sorry. A different number. Um, yeah. There's oh, one old number that I don't have it, anymore. It might be. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe I just need your new number. Okay. Let me give you the, the new one. Okay. Um, call, uh, Stop 202. Two two zero. Two. Yes, nine six zero. Oh. Stop. Nine six zero. Four 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 eight. One one four four eight. Um, four 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 eight. Four 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 eight. Okay, I'm gonna read it back to you. Two zero two nine six zero. Four 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 eight. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And you guys, uh, certain time I should call you. Sorry. Um. It's better to call me in the afternoon because- Okay, me too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, yeah, the, guy, the numbers that I give you guys are the ones that ring my cell phone, my laptop, my phone over here, my iPad. So I do have a personal cell phone, but I might not have that number with me. So I give you the number that rings all of my lines at once. That's my business phone that rings all the lines. So that way, no matter where I'm at, I get your call. If you have, if I give you my cell and I may not or may not get your message, because I don't always have my cell with me because I don't take it with me because it's a tracking device. So don't be upset if you call my cell phone and you don't get me because I don't take my cell phone with me everywhere, you guys, just so you know. But if you call the, the business number, more than likely I have some device with me and I might be able yeah. to, to get in touch with you. Okay. So um, who else had some questions here? 
I have a comment, not a cat. Oh, question. okay. Cool beans. It's um, it's really ironic that you um went to the Book of Job because at church on Sunday, um, our sermon was actually about the Book of Job. Wow. wow. The, the title of the service was There's a Time Limit to Your Test. Yes. And I swear, ever since Sunday, everything has been a piggyback to that. Like from talking to you on Saturday to understanding, you know, to getting the sermon on Sunday and then today you bring it back up again. I, I swear, it's, it's just one one thing after another that's showing me. There's a time to your test. Yes, it amen. Is, it is time to get these babies home where they go Absolutely. and be a happy family. This is We got to do this. This is done. It is yes. a good deal. I just want to piggyback and say what she was saying because I do have like a, I have like three different like Bible study type apps on my phone. And like whenever I'm stressed or I'm going through something, I usually open one or I'll get a notification or something like that. And yesterday it was funny because it was a verse from Job as well. And it, like, I just oh. think that's like, funny because um, Ms. Anderson was the one that introduced me to you guys as well. So it's definitely showing how God's working behind the scenes, like they say. Yes, thank you for sharing that. And that's right, we don't know. I, I just kind of, that kind of just hit me. So. It's not anything that I was thinking of, but if that's where the spirit is moving, then he's going to give you confirmation over and over and over again. So you're going to hear people saying the same thing. Okay, let's hear it. Anybody else want to make a comment before I read this last scripture from Revelations? Okay. All right, so can I have some someone read this last um, scripture right here. This is this is um, Revelations chapter twenty, verses eleven through fifteen. And the reason why I want us to read it is because life is a test, you all. I know we're supposed to be having fun and living our best life, and that's what God has for us because Job was clearly living his best life. But there's going to come a time where we all have to go through something that's going to test our faith, something that's going to be so hard it's going to make you want to give up. Because he and he's not going to come at you easy. He doesn't do it like that. And he's not going to come at you fair either. He's going to trick you, have all types of lies. He's going to make you want to kill yourself. And if you don't want to kill yourself, he's not really doing his job. He is on it. Okay. So you're being tested. And don't beat up on yourself. Because if you're the one that's going through, it's more than likely there's something good about you. And there's a and, and you're a chosen one because you have been selected to be the black sheep of the family and to go through everything and to be the one that did not um, go along with all the other nonsense. Because now everyone's going along with what they're supposed to be going along with and the testing time and sifting. Right. They're putting two people in different categories. So let's get down to the scripture real quick. <clears throat> OK, Malachi, if you don't mind. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. People of the world are judged. Then I saw a great white throne and the one who was sitting on, on it. Earth and sky ran away from him and disappeared. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And the and book, the of, book life of life was, was, was open. There were also other books open. The dead were judged by what they had done, which was written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. Each person was judged by what he had done. And death and Hades was thrown into the lake of fire. Lake of fire. Okay, let, let me um, take over because I think we're getting a little bit of feedback from your phone. Now, I'm going to read the rest of it. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read this last script for you guys so you can kind of know what we're looking forward to. Then I saw a new heaven and earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared. Now there is no sea. 
And I saw the holy city coming down out of heaven from God. The holy city is the new Jerusalem. It was prepared like a bride dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne. The voice said, now God's home is with men. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, sadness, crying, or pain. All the old ways are going away. So you, we are going to eventually be comforted, you all. And, and we are crying because of the death and the sadness. This is what we're dealing with. Real, real, real life stuff here. The one who was sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this because these words are true and can be trusted. The one on the throne said to me, it is finished. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I will give free water from the spring of the water of life to anyone who is thirsty. All right, this is where I'm getting to right here. Anyone who wins the victory will receive this and I will be his God and he will be my son. But to those who are cowards, who refuse to believe, who do evil things, who kill, who are sexually immoral, who do evil magic, worship idols, tell lies, and all this will have a place in the lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So you all, the people who are doing these things to you, they're going to end up being in this lake of sulfur. He said that you can trust these words. And do you see why they're there? I mean, at first, who, who, who used to think God was so bad for putting people in a place like this? But now after what you're going through, you see why there is a place like that. Okay, I know that I felt that way. I'm just like, you know what? Okay, well, these people have earned it because they've lied so much. They have persecuted us. They have stolen our children. Some of our children have not made it back from where they've put them. They have earned this, this, this what they've done. So you guys, that's all for tonight. I just wanted to share that with you and to let you know that, you know, we use a lot of resources. It, you know, it says that um, God looked at the book of life, but he looked at other books too. There's lots of books here that we'll talk about, um, give you information. It's not just the Bible, right? So we read the Bible, but we also must know the law, the whole law. So that's why I read these other books, because it's not just the, the law in the Bible and those statutes, it's everything. We have to keep all these statutes, even though they don't keep them. Okay. Yes, we are fighting back. And let's see, Christina, do you want to say something? I see you have something, you written something in the chat over here. Oh, someone says I'm going to start doing that, leaving my phone. Yes. You guys, remember, when you go into these places, your phone is tracking you. And how many people are going somewhere for Thanksgiving? I want to let's let's have an honest talk right now, real quickly. How many people are traveling for the holidays? I'll probably be going home, but my location is off. So okay. So remember you all, if you take your cell phone with you wherever you're at some place, and then someone later on comes and says, oh, I, I tested positive for COVID and you were there with me for this many hours without a face mask on, they can come and track your phone and say that you were a certain place and then come and start demanding that you do all these different things in order to get your children back or to say that you have this. So remember- Go on your settings and um, there's an actual COVID set on your phone. Remove it, take it off. Yes, don't forget to take that off your phone. So that way you don't consent to getting COVID notifications and then they start tracking your location and start to say that you are um, some type of risk or something like that. And also they are letting people kind of go out during the holidays because you know, the Bible says there, there will be peace and safety. As soon as they say peace and safety, that's when the Lord is going to come in exact judgment. So they're trying to, to make everything seem like it's going to go back to normal and just to kind of go to for the holidays and keep everything, you know, like, but remember, these are not even God's original holidays. They're not obligated. You're not obligated to participate in any of them and just pray and ask God if these people 
who are your family? And I know you love them. And I'm not ever talking about family because I believe in family, but ask if it's worth it and ask for discernment and make sure that the people who are inviting you to these events, be it Christmas, Thanksgiving or whatever, you know, if these people haven't been there for you in your life, should you really be breaking bread with them? Because if they aren't keeping God's commandments and, and if they aren't there for you and you're having a hard time, well, the Bible says if you sit down and break bread with them, then you are partaking with them and you are being one with them. And whatever their whatever wrath is coming their way is going to come yours. So just make sure you are are spending time with those family members that are genuine and not giving somebody a title that they really don't deserve. If, if they're if they stabbed you in your back the whole time, don't feel the need to sit down with them. And, and just because it's a holiday time. I love that validation just because my husband and I decided to get a hotel in downtown Chicago instead of spending time with people, like you said, that are, that put us in this position in the first place. Yes. So yeah, you definitely have, don't feel obligated to continue to break bread with them because, you know, the the Lord does give us warnings about continuing to be in certain people's presence and also spiritually you know, holidays, especially man-made holidays are high satanic days and they can transfer spirits onto you. Maybe you have an upcoming court date and they want to just say, oh, I saw her during this time and she looked like this or they were doing that. So just ask the Lord for discernment if that's something you should be doing, because it may not be what he has for you. It's, he's saying enough is enough now. So, you know, your true family of people are going to act like it. It's not by name. Yeah, well, well, Mel, we, you know, with my family household, we do uh, observe unleavened bread and uh, Day of Atonement. So we do those. We go according to the Torah. Yeah. Yes. And those days are really important. And those are the ones that are on God's calendar. So you want to make sure that you keep those days because these other days are are meant to kind of take place of the original days in order to get everyone to participate and really they're 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 not the real feast days there it's a it's a feast day but it's a copy of what god was doing and when they get together it's kind of like um you know we we know what happened with the native americans you know and when i say native americans it's not always the people that we think of as far as um their skin complexion and whatever their tribes are, whoever they've designated are Native Americans. And as uh, a, a Native American myself, I have to ask myself, do I really want to celebrate a holiday that had to do with the demise of my people? When you look at the, I was looking at the history of New York and Bronx and Brooklyn and Queen City, and they had so many Native Americans there. And so many, so much tradition. And it was just kind of like bulldozed over and replaced. I think it was called, um, Jamaica, Jamaica Queens. And it was, it was, was, and I asked my, my husband, because he's from Brooklyn. I said, does Jamaica Queens means that it's Jamaican because he's half Jamaican and stuff. So I'm like, does that mean it's Jamaican? He's like, no, these are the Jamaica Indians who actually lived in New York before it was taken over. And you have no history of that. You wouldn't even know that you're standing on tribal sacred grounds because you think you're standing in the middle of Times Square. So we have to ask ourselves as Native Americans, if any of you have Native American ancestry, and again, remember these courts, they're supposed to respect your Native American ancestry, but many times they don't ask. And even if you are Native American, they don't give you the benefit of a, the doubt. So as a Native American, I don't know what your skin color is, but if you have any Native American ancestry, you really have to ask yourself, should you be partaking in something that is about, that kind of trivializes the demise of your people, right? So anyway, that's well, just something to think about. Well, yeah, they, they look right over that because uh, myself, I'm Aborigine. My family, we're Aborigine. But however, we turned in our documents and everything to the court. And they still forced they still forced the label black and or African American on our paperwork. And I told them time after time, we are not we are not um, labeled. We are Aboriginal. Yes. They cannot tell so, you. They want to tell you. 
right? They want to always label you and tell you where you're from and what your name is and what, write a report about you. And they want to control the narrative. Correct. Yeah. So you guys start, you know, everyone do your part to, to say no to the system. Did you know that who knew that Joe Biden's vaccine mandate for small businesses was overturned in the Supreme Court? Who knew about that? I got a notification. I did. More to come. Internet. There's plenty more to come. It's going to higher courts right now as we speak. I did. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I've been following it because in Chicago, they're trying to make um, all um, employers um, vaccinate. That's the big argument my husband and I are having right now is because his job is mandating all employers to um, vaccinate or otherwise they got to test weekly. And I and he and he had no choice but to test weekly. because I'm like, we're not doing that. Yes, it's very risky. And from a spiritual standpoint, it's very suspect because we know about the mark of the beast and whether you believe that it is or isn't. We know that it looks very much like it. So you know, what can I say? I'm just a person, but I want everyone to always remember you do your part to not go along with their agendas. The more that you give up your rights, the more that they take. The only reason we haven't turned into Australia or Austria is because we have guns. Americans have refused to put down their guns and therefore they don't take a piss like they do in European countries and just throw your rights in the garbage can like Nazi Germany. It's repeating itself in a lot of these countries, and they're supposed to be so civilized, right? I know so, you heard what happened over the weekend with Europe. All those protests, burning things down, Molotov cocktails being tossed at the police. It was going crazy in Europe over the weekend. Over these yes, and they, but they won't put that on the news media, will they? No, of course not. Because you're not supposed to know about it. It's censorship. So you guys, I just want you to, to just to do your part. Stand strong. Everyone's standing strong these days. Don't, don't give in. Don't uh, go along with it. Everybody's every time you go along with something that gives them more power, if everyone stands against it, it's going to start crumbling. The power is in the hands of the people, whether they believe it or not, it's in your hands. So just keep staying. No, keep standing strong. And you guys, I want to say this. If you've already taken the shot, like I know many of our members have because they've been in different situations they're, they want you to have a third booster shot, right? So let's think about this. You have one, you have two, you have three. If you've only take, take, taken one, think about whether you should get that second one or not. I'm not telling you what to do. I just want you to do some research and think about it and really understand if you're feeling like you are pressured or forced or being, um, you know, constantly bombarded by stuff on TV. Is that making you make this choice or is it something that you want to do because this is your body? So I'm here to just to say, think about it and, and don't feel like you're being pressured. If you feel like you're being pressured, there's something that you got to just really pray about, okay? Because I know that we all have our own relationship with the Lord and he's going to tell me things just like he tells you something. If you ask him, he'll tell you. So ask and, and, and ask where you're, you're being led on that, okay, you all? All right, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and say a, a final prayer. Thank you, God, for bringing us all here today and for opening up the, the floodgates. Lord, just let your Holy Spirit rain on us, Lord. Just fill us tonight, Lord, with all of you, Lord. We want all of you, Lord. We wanna give you, we wanna be that bride that sees you and that meets her husband and is declared to be blameless. We wanna be like Job who has, no spot or winkle, Lord. We know that we've been through a lot, but you don't look at all those things and you don't see all those things. You see the best version of us and you're always talking in our favor and you are always advocating for us, Lord, and speaking on our behalf, Lord. So just, just help us, God, because this is so hard what we're going through, Lord. We need your help, Lord. We need you, Lord. Protect our children, Lord. Protect them, God. That's what we want the most, Lord. You already promised, God, that no matter what we go through, that you weren't gonna harm a hair on their body, Lord. So, and if our children have been harmed, Lord, we know that you can heal. So Lord, if, if anything has been happening, if they've been injected with anything or any surgery has been done on them, Lord, we at, we're praying for healing. And we know that you even resurrect people, Lord, when it's time, God, you're going to bring them back for the dead for all those who are missing children, Lord, heal our hearts, Lord. And we want you finally, God, to put Satan in his place, Lord, cage him up, put him in prison, Lord, with all his dominions, 
all his demons we're tired of being tormented lord we're, we're ever patient and our love for you is forever god but we just want these people to go and we're pleading with you to to make judgment and to revenge because we know revenge is yours so lord revenge us god and now make judgment make the right judgment on the people who deserve it lord also bless our love life lord bless the marriages lord thank you lord for the marriages that have just occurred lord bless miss Mr. and Mrs. Beerlin, Lord, as they go on to their life, Lord, the new honeymoons, Lord. If we have any dating couples here tonight, Lord, just put the just put that marriage and that love bug in their heart, Lord, so they'll start committing to each other and building that bond between each other, Lord. And if there's someone single here and they're looking for love, then God send them the right person, God, and make sure that that those tricky devils that try to come and pretend to be the right person don't come in and, and mess up their life even more right before they're going to get this blessing, Lord. And uh, if anybody has any prayer requests, you know, feel free to, to just let me know and I'll pray about it. Pray for Caitlin's patience. Okay. Lord, we know these teenagers out here don't have a lot of patience, God, and they can ruin their lives before they even started, Lord. And, and the enemy is always looking for young people to brainwash them and put all these negative thoughts in their head because they're so young and impressionable. Just put a hedge just put a hedge of protection around Caitlin, Lord, and help her to, to stay focused, God, and to not let these negative influences, God. They, now that she's been taken out of the care and custody of her mother, Lord, we need for you to protect her because her mother can't be there for her to, to, to show her the right way, Lord. But we know that you are the ultimate. You have custody at the end of the day, Lord. So just keep her, keep her solid, Lord, and help her to have patience, Lord, just like Job. In the name of Jesus, anybody else have a prayer request? Um, is it I do. For my two middle kids that I have no idea where they are in the world right now, and it's scaring me horribly. What are your children's names? Audrey First names. and Ian. Okay, what'd you say again? Audrey and Audrey Ian. And Ian. Okay, Lord, we just lift up Audrey and Ian right now, Lord. Put a hedge of protection, Lord, around them, Lord, and encamp your angels around them, Lord, so that way they may not be harmed, Lord. Let not a scratch go on their bodies. Let not an evil word, Lord. Let the enemy who's be confused, Lord. We don't want the enemy to, to just his plans to be canceled, Lord, for all the things that he wants to do, because we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in accusation shall be put down, for this is the inheritance of those that love the lord we want our inheritance lord we want you to put that protection around us that job had the devil was looking like why can't i touch them lord protect her children lord because she's asking you lord and you said if we ask anything in your name while we're all together and agreeing that it will be done so we are praying and we know we have faith that this will be done and that even though she doesn't know where they are right now you know where they are and your angels are there to do what they need to do lord so lord Show yourself right now. Show yourself in all of your, your omnipotence, Lord, that you could be anywhere. You're all powerful, Lord, because we are expecting that miracle. And thank you, Lord, because we know it's done. Okay, I heard another prayer request. Yes, it was me. My, my daughter, Heather Brockwell, um, I, I've been missing a lot of meetings and stuff because she's been sick. We had mm -hmm. a doctor's appointment today, so please keep in prayer. We have a, um, she's a past cancer survivor. Just, okay. Just rebuke it. <laughs> okay. Lord, we know that you are the healer. You created us and you can heal, God. And you have healed before, Lord. And if you've done it for them, that you can do it for us, Lord. So we want you to give us that same favor, Lord. We want you to heal. We want you to heal Heather's body, Lord. Give her that mercy, Lord. Let that cancer go back to the pit of hell where it came from, Lord. Let the cancer cells just start uh, just dying, Lord. Let those cancers uh, just that, that the white blood cells just come in, Lord, send, her, send your defense system, the, her natural immune system that you built into her, Lord, empower it and give it a boost, Lord, so that way it can just flush it through her system, Lord. And God, we pray that all those demonic hands that are trying to curse her with negativity and trying to take away her health, Lord, we pray that they are just, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We break that bond. We, we, we break, we break all that is trying to enchain her, Lord. And we know that if we break things down here on earth, it is broken in heaven, Lord. So we lose her right now from all of that because we know that you are the God of miracles and you 
can snap your finger, blink your eye, breathe your breath, Lord, and give healing, Lord. So we're thanking you for that, Lord. And we're not going to listen to that negative doctor's report because we believe yours, Lord. And we're waiting to hear this, Lord. And let us do our part in eating healthy, eating your fruits, eating your vegetables, staying away from all that cancer-causing foods that go into our bodies, Lord. We're going to do our part, Lord, to heal ourselves with all the medicines and herbs that you put around us, God. Thank you, Lord. And please, Lord, let nothing but love and comfort from all her families come to her to help her heal faster, Lord, because she's in a good, positive state of mind. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody else have a prayer request? Okay, if, if no one else has anything, we're going to end that, Lord. Thank you that all this is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Mel, can I make a special announcement that you don't even know about? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with my background in racing greyhounds and raising them. Well, I want to introduce to Fly Mel Janelle. What is that? Hold on, I'm about to show you. <laughs> she will be going to Tri-State in West Virginia to run, and this is Fly Mel Janelle. Oh my goodness, that is so sweet. She's so beautiful. She is. She's a spunky little girl like you. So, <laughs> wow, that is a first. <laughs> I feel like a god mom. She's a, she's forty eight pounds of sass, and she's you. So, all right, hey, hey, yep. hey. Calm I'll take that. Yes, I hope she wins. I know she will. Yeah, I'm her mom. What do you expect? <laughs> yeah, I know you're. So that was just my announcement. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, we're going to hang out. We're going to come together again next Monday. Again, if you have any questions, just hit me up tomorrow. I'm going to do one last powwow with everyone before I just get into buried in the, in the, the writing, you guys. And, but feel free. If it's an emergency, I'm not completely gone. You can always contact Lori. She'll contact me. But my, next Monday, we'll be back together. If you haven't done your presentation yet, please um, throw something together just so we can, you know, hear something, anything, any tidbit from you would be great. If not, then that's okay because this is no, um, it's not a test or anything like that. It's just for your learning experience. So with that said, we're going to call that a night and post this online because no one said anything crazy tonight. <laughs> sometimes we can't post stuff because people say too much information you guys that's the only reason why i don't post some of these videos because it, it can be really personal sometimes i got one thing to say to lloyd bell uh-oh hey you, you see your girl was in here tonight didn't you who oh yeah, uh, like yes, yes 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 <laughs> so kudos to her <laughs> yes ma'am amen All right, I was like, what did i do wrong <laughs> nothing i just want to let i told her she need to come in tonight and i'm glad she popped in Yes, yes. She got three, she's got three little ones at home, Mel. <laughs> yes, you guys, bring the people, bring the people into the ark. Say, yes, oh, bring them into the ark. You're doing great. I appreciate it. And, and they need to hear it. And the Lord will give you credit for giving them, you know, because I know it can be sometimes hard chasing parents around. There are, you know, they're feeling the way they are, but you just be patient with them and keep encouraging them to come. Yes, right. ma'am. Y'all have a good night. Good you night, too. you guys. No, don't night, guys. Good night, you guys. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.